SpaceX and NASA are working together to figure out how to put a Crew Dragon onto the Hubble Space Telescope. Okay, so you dock with the Space Telescope and then something cool is gonna happen. Now let me show you what that is. NASA tweeted this the other day. This is from NASA Hubble. An unfunded Space Act agreement to conduct a study of a commercial mission to boost Hubble's orbit and extend its operation was signed by NASA and SpaceX, a mission concept that may be applied to be applied to other spacecraft and commercial vehicles. The Crew Dragon docks with the Hubble and boost the orbit. So when is this gonna happen? What's gonna happen? How is this gonna happen? Now let's take a look at what Elon Musk said down here. He said, yay. <laughs> That's it, no exclamation points, no anything else. He just said, yay. So I feel the same way, Elon, but I also have a few exclamation points after that. So here's the release from NASA. NASA SpaceX to study Hubble Space uh, Telescope uh, reboost possibility. Um, an astronaut on board the Space Shuttle Atlantis captured this image of Hubble. So that's what the Hubble Space Telescope looks like. It's about the size of a bus, mind you. It's pretty big of a school bus. And image April 24th, 2021, shows the SpaceX Crew Dragon Endeavor. Um, and that's when it's docking to the International Space Station. So this would be sort of similar to what it may look like if it docks with the Hubble Space Telescope. Now let's take a look at this agreement here and go through this a little bit, and then we'll talk about the actual mission and how cool is this thing gonna be? Uh, they signed the uh, unfunded Space Act agreement. So basically NASA isn't paying SpaceX anything for this. They're not sending, giving them billions of dollars for this. SpaceX is doing this because they think it can, um, well, they're a business, so let's just be honest about it. They think it could bring them in money in the future for missions to uh, you know, the Hubble Space Telescope. If anything were to happen to it, if it needs to be fixed or boosted at any point, because it needs to go to a higher orbit, and if it can go to a higher orbit, it can stay in space for a very long time because it's the, uh, the, the orbit is decreasing because the Earth is basically pulling it in with the gravity of the Earth. So um, let's take a look at this. The idea to boost the agency's Hubble Space Telescope into a higher orbit with the Dragon spacecraft in no cost to the government. So SpaceX is like, hey, we got this cool Dragon spacecraft. Let's kind of dock this thing with the Hubble because we know the space shuttle used to do it. And all it is is a dock, right? We already docked with the space station and that thing is going crazy fast. So we could dock with the Hubble too. And they said there are no plans for, for NASA to conduct a, or fund a servicing mission or compete this opportunity. So he's designed to help the agency understand the commercial possibilities. So basically, NASA is saying, we're not gonna give you any money, SpaceX. We're not gonna complete this. There's no plans of right now to actually push the, uh, push the uh, Hubble up any higher, but SpaceX is working with the Polaris program. Yeah, Jared Isaacman uh, proposed this study to better understand the technical challenges associated with servicing missions. This study is non-exclusive and other companies may propose similar studies with different rockets or spacecraft as their model. So basically this leaves it open to everybody. If Boeing wants Starliner to get in on the action, it can get in on the action. So it's saying non-exclusive, other companies can do this. Whoever you are with any rocket, with any sort of uh, pod on top of it, any sort of architecture you want to build on it, let's try to figure this out because I think this is going to be important for future missions, not only for Hubble, but for other spacecraft in the future, other orbiting spacecraft. Teams expect the study to take up to six months, collecting technical data from both Hubble and SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. This data will help determine whether it would be possible to safely rendezvous, dock, and move the telescope into a more stable orbit. Study is an exciting uh, example of innovation approaches uh, NASA is exploring through private public uh, partnerships. SpaceX, NASA working together through Jared Isaacman's, uh, Isaacman's uh, program, the Polaris program right here. Hey, let's work together. You know, Jared and SpaceX, they have a pretty good past. So, uh, Inspiration 4, huge success for SpaceX and Jared and St. Jude. Um, study, you know, this next one. This next study is going to kind of put private companies forward in the future to do these things that only NASA and the government did in the past. So this, I want to show you this, actually. Let's take a, let's take like a little step back in time. This is from ESA, from the European Space Agency. 
from the Hubble site. And this was the space station. This is an animation of the space station attached to Hubble. And I'm just scrubbing through it real quick, but that's kind of what it looked like um, with the shuttle Atlantis and uh, the space telescope docked together. So basically this thing was like a cargo ship. The space, uh, the space shuttle was like a cargo ship attached to the Hubble Use the Canadarm, <laughs> not the Canadarm, the shuttle arm to uh, get over there and um, um, keep it in place. But then astronauts could go over there and service it, right? So that's kind of what SpaceX was thinking. Hey, we don't really need to put people on the, uh, the Hubble right now, but we're going to use our um, capsule to push it up you know, push it away from the earth a little bit so it can have like 20 more years of service because Hubble's still doing great work. The James Webb Space Telescope is out there and it's doing cool stuff, but Hubble is still doing cool stuff too. And they want to keep that going because there's so many scientists using the data from Hubble that they don't want to miss a thing. Wink Aerosmith reference from that one movie. I forgot what it was, but it was some asteroid movie. But here's the Polaris program too, right? So Jared, uh, you know, they have... Polaris Dawn, which we've talked about numerous times on this channel. Polaris Dawn, they're basically going to be going outside of this capsule, outside of the Crew Dragon on an EVA. So they're going to be going outside of this, the first private EVA in the history of spaceflight. So Jared Isaacman probably going to be the guy that does it because Jared is a, a thrill seeker and he's a leader. So if he gets to do it, he's gonna, he's, he's like... This is like a kid in a candy shop for this guy, right? So how cool is it? Uh, a spacewalk supports scientific research designed to advance both human health on Earth and our understanding of human health during uh, future long duration space flights. Use this data, use the Polaris Dawn data to support the mission two, which they haven't even announced yet, right? So mission three, they say, hey, we're gonna be the first human space flight on the Starship which is a huge, huge deal. But mission two, we don't know what that is yet. Nobody outside of the Polaris program knows about this and they probably have some stuff cooking up. But if this Hubble thing works out and it's a six month turnaround for this thing, uh, Polaris Dawn, the first one, will be done sometime this year. And mission two, next year, mid next year, while they're still building the Starship, so mission two could possibly be sending um, an uncrewed capsule because they don't really need people to go up there. They're just going to push the thing up. I mean, it could be crewed if, you know, if anything were to happen during that, it could be autonomous, um, but they don't really need people to do it because they have all the trajectories and they have all the math and they have all the data to get these th two things to come together, the Hubble and the Crew Dragon. So there's really no need to have people on it. But could mission two be the Hubble mission? We'll find out. That's the, that's the hard part is we don't really know if that's going to be the case. So Michael Sheets um, kind of breaks down this whole thing in like one long tweet thread. Uh, they had, a, had an announcement the other day. Uh, they had a, a talk about it. Um, what are the goal, main goals of the study is to take a closer look at docking with Hubble. These are just like real quick snippets here. Um, uh, applicability beyond Hubble for servicing missions. If the study takes us down a path where a mission is possible, this will certainly fit within the parameters we established for the Polaris program, says Jared Isaacman. Yeah, pretty cool. No transfer of funds for this feasibility study. SpaceX is just going like, eh, I think we could do it. <laughs> um, and Isaacman noted that I think we crossed the bridge of the mission spe uh, specifics and who's ultimately flying it if this study supports the idea. So basically saying, hey, this study, if it works, we're going to figure this out as we go. Like, we don't really have any concrete plans yet. We're just trying to figure it out. Is the data available? Can the Crew Dragon even push this up high enough? Is it even feasible to dock with this thing? So um, going on a little bit further, um, Jared Eisenberg uh, says this type of effort could be, could be done with little or no potential cost to government. So if they're up there anyway, so say Polaris Dawn is doing a mission, you know, say if they're like, hey, we want to do an exploratory mission. We want to do a really uh, cool EVA. We want to do something uh, out of the ordinary. But hey, we just happen to be by the Hubble Space Telescope. 
you know, we're as high as the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, you know, could we return it to 600 kilometers um, and give it like 20 years of service? Eh, might as well. Right? We're here anyway. So let's just do both those missions with little or no potential cost to the government. So basically, that's a cool thing for NASA and for the people that are funding all of this stuff, the taxpayers, because SpaceX is kind of like, and Polaristan is kind of like, it would be cool. <laughs> you know, what do you think? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about this? Because I think this is one of the coolest things to happen to space flight. If this actually happens, it's one of the coolest things that will happen in the next five or six years. You know, if they can actually pull this off, it might, might even happen in the next two years. But if they could pull this off, the next five or six years are going to be really freaking sweet for SpaceX and the Polaris Dawn program. One more thing that's really sweet. Um, and our our best wishes and our hearts go out to the people in Florida and every place else that was affected by Hurricane Ian. But a good thing here, Visitor Complex reopens October 1st. A little bit off subject here, but the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex will remain closed on Friday, September 30th, but will reopen Saturday, October 1st. So anybody that's down there in Florida that wants to go see all of the history of NASA at Kennedy Space Center is open on Saturday on the 1st of October. So head down there if you can, take a look. It's an amazing place. It's a really cool place. And it shows that NASA is able to do the cleanup uh, relatively quickly, which means NASA can clean up for the SLS relatively quickly, get it out to the pad, hopefully quickly, and we get a launch pretty soon uh, because the SLS is a huge, huge mission and we're expecting really cool things from it in the near future. So hopefully they launch by the end of this year. I think this Polaris Dawn program or this Polaris program and the Polaris Dawn program are both cool. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't yet, if you watch to the very end of this, uh, please hit the subscribe button. And if you can, give this video a like and of course, leave a comment. And if you're really into it, make sure to hit the membership button and become a member, become part of the flight crew, because that really helps us out every single month to keep doing these videos and be part of your life with uh, space flight and all the other stuff that goes along with it, like this cool mission from Polaris program. So thanks everybody for all your continued support. I love you all. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.